want to call on our next panelist, pharmacist Mrs. Meru Meche Chineye from the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, distinguished pharmacists. Good afternoon to our guests. I greet all my elders present, especially the president, Mazis Samoa, Dr. Lolo Oju Ojo, Professor Isa. Um, I thank you for having me here, Dr. Kingsley Amiko. I feel very privileged to be your host. So I welcome all pharmacists and guests to today's webinar. I welcome all pharmacists and our guests to today's webinar by the Drug Use Enlightenment Campaign of the Association of Hospital and Administrative Pharmacies of Nigeria National. This webinar is coming up the back of the United Nations International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. And um, the theme, Better Knowledge for Better Care. Now, this theme is primarily aimed to increase the knowledge base of the global abuse of drugs, which is a big problem in our society. There's a clear knowledge deficit with regards to drug use and addiction. And this reflects in the lack of adequate policies on treatment, care, and prevention of drug abuse in many countries, of which Nigeria is not new to it. Now, this situation is even worse by the fact that we have a lot of stigma and myths surrounding the disease. So, in this video, I will attempt to shed more light on the scientific basis of addiction, specifically from the idea that people who suffer from addiction, you know, have a moral failing or that they are flawed. And I will try to prove that addiction is a great disease. In this video, before we do that, however, we'll look at some global and Nigerian perspectives. That is to say, the data that has come out of Nigeria and from the United Nations. I'll also try to define some terms. I know some, um, Dr. Lolojo has tried to define some of these terms, but I would particularly pay attention to specific terms, which is key to this presentation. We'll then go ahead to look at addiction as a disease, and then we'll talk about our roles our roles as pharmacists, and then I'll conclude. So the next slide, please. So according to the most recent data published by the United Nations on drug abuse, the World Drug Report, it was estimated that about 269 million individuals had used a psychoactive substance in 2018, while about 5.6 million of them had suffered a drug use disorder. In Nigeria, bringing it down to our own roots, in Nigeria, the most comprehensive report with regards to drug use was published in 2018 by the National Bureau of Statistics, and it showed us that about 14.3 million individuals had used a psychoactive substance in 2017. Of these numbers, one in five of these people actually reported problems due to substance use. So we can see that one in five of these people suffer from a drug use disorder. Can we move on to the next slide, please? Okay, the next one. So if you compare the figures it's slide behind, thank you. If you compare the figures from the United Nations, showing that there were about 35.6 million individuals reporting drug use problems, and then that of Nigeria showing 1.5, these figures are staggering to say the least. And it helps to put into perspective the drug use problems that we have. So it is practically knocking on our doorstep. And Dr. Kolodo has talked a lot about this. Now let's try to define some terms. In defining these terms, it will help you to understand better what we're talking about as the video progresses. Psychoactive substances, what are they? We all know the meaning of drugs. We are pharmacists. But psychoactive substances are basically drugs that affect the central nervous system and changes how people behave or perceive to what is happening around them. 
right? Um, so you have um, the professor, Professor Issa Bello, uh, talked about legality and illegality. So you would be surprised to know that commonly used substances such as tobacco and um, alcohol are actually psychoactive in nature. But what is drug misuse? Now, drug misuse refers to the use of any drug in a manner that is not consistent with legal or medical guidelines. So take for example, you get a prescription of a medication that says take two tablets in the morning, two tablets at night, but you choose to take the four tablets at once, and that's called drug misuse. Another way to look at drug misuse is when you have a person taking a medication, a drug, just to provide pleasure or to avoid reality. That is termed drug misuse. So let's quickly jump into addiction. What is addiction? Now, addiction is known to be a chronic, relapsing brain disease characterized by a compulsive drug seeking and use despite the harmful consequences. I want us to pay close attention to this because we would highlight some of these words as we go on. So in the hospital, when a clinical diagnosis is being made of addiction, the doctors refer to it as a substance use disorder. And this is the classification you will get in the DSM, which Professor Issa talked about. It's a diagnostic and statistical manual. It's a manual that helps doctors to look at certain criteria and say, because you have such and such symptoms, which falls under this um, disorder, you then have substance use disorder. So these symptoms under substance use disorder can be categorized into four. When you have a person who has impaired control to use, that means he's unable to control his ability to use the drug, or he's unable to control his urge. When there's a social impairment in an individual, for instance, it relates to when the person is unable to fulfill his responsibilities, whether at work, whether at school, or at, the, at home. That refers to social impairment. Risky use. Risky use refers to when a person knows he's going to, say, perform a job or drive, but cannot control himself and still uses the psychoactive substance. That is risky use. And of course, we have the pharmacological criteria. That is to say, when there is tolerance and, and Withdrawal in an individual. So these symptoms, which fall under these four categories, when seen in the first thing, the first thing is then said to have what's known as a substance use disorder. So what a disease? Yeah, please, you have three more minutes. So what a disease? A disease is an alteration of the normal structure or function of any body part, organ, or system that can be identified by characteristic syndrome or set of signs and symptoms. Now let's move on to the scientific basis of addiction. How do you want to get to right? So the brain is the most complex organ of the human body and it's responsible for practically every basic human function. It's responsible for how our thoughts and behaviors and emotions are formed. When you got the stimuli, the brain helps to interpret and respond to that stimuli. And it also controls and regulates um, every basic human function. Now, the brain does this by sending messages along billions of interconnected neurons by means of electrical and chemical signals to different structures in the brain. These chemicals are otherwise known as neurotransmitters. When these neurotransmitters are released from a neuron, they attach to receptors of the receiving neuron, passing messages, which the, then the neurotransmitters are subsequently reabsorbed by the sending neuron. The, send, the receiving neuron then continues to transmit this message. So different functions, different structures of the brain have different functions. The next slide, please. So we talk about the brain stem. Please move on. Can you please move on? Okay. So the brain stem is one area of the brain that is significantly affected by psychoactive substances. So the brain stem is responsible for life, life giving functions or life sustaining functions such as your heart rate, your breathing, and your sleeping. While the limb 
No, please go backwards. Thank you. Please back. try to be rounding up. The prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is responsible for our thoughts, our planning, solving problems, and our ability to make informed judgments. While the limbic system regulates our emotions and motivation, um, the limbic system contains the reward circuit, um, and it includes the reward and memory center. This reward circuit is critical to the development of addiction. Our brains are adapted to ensure that we repeat life-sustaining activities by associating these activities to pleasure or reward. Now, this pleasure or reward is largely related to the neurotransmitter called dopamine, which is released when we eat or socialize. What happens is that psychoactive substances now flood the reward circuit with dopamine in large quantities, and these substances induce rewards are much more powerful than natural rewards, even as much as 10 times higher. Now, this overstimulation producing the euphoric is. Pharmacist Chine, please round up in the next two minutes. This overstimulation produces the euphoric effects that are sought by people. Now, I would have loved to explain to you why addiction is a disease. And if we go back to the definition of addiction, you will realize that the definition of a disease states that it is an alteration of the normal structure or function of any body part or organ, and it can be identified with a set of symptoms and signs. So with addiction, the symptoms that you find with people who suffer from addiction include craving, because it is it's a, it is um, a subjective you know sign. It is a subjective information, and so most people cannot measure. You can't measure craving. The signs associated with addiction include abscesses at injection sites. Research has shown that there is a significant change in the structure and function of a person of a person who uses drugs in his brain and this difference can also be associated with the difference when you have a heart of a person with a heart disease compared to a person who has a pelvic heart now one other time that is frequently used in addiction is causative agents and the causative agent for addiction is clearly the psychoactive substance so do people set out to become addicted to psychoactive substances? But the answer is no. Because although the initial decision to take drugs is voluntary, individuals' ability to exercise self-control is impaired. In fact, the individual is so confident that he can overcome whatever or control his urge to use. There's so much to say, but no time to say it. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for your presentation.